behind me, continuing at the pine, not a pine, we have another conifer, and this conifer is in the juniper uh, genus. And so this one doesn't have needles the way we'd see with some of the other conifers. It has little scale-like foliage, and we'll take a closer look at what that looks like on the actual twig. Here you can see the foliage, and if you look closely, you'll notice that it comes out in little scales as opposed to needles. At the end, you might see little brown structures, particularly in the spring. Those brown structures are where the pollen is held, and so you might not see those later uh, during the summer. They might appear in the fall or be there in the spring. There's another interesting thing that you might see on the red cedar. The red cedar can have this structure on it, which you'll see particularly in the spring. This is a fungus. It's called a gymnosporangium, or a rust. And it's a very interesting rust in that it lives half of its life on a juniper, and the other half of its life it will live in something in the rose family, commonly apples or hawthorns, but can also impact service berries and, and other species in the rose family. This is one that has just finished for the spring, and you'll see these are called teleal horns, and they will be a bright orange and sort of octopus-like. Here we have a tree that's a little different than the pine, spruce, or fir that we've looked at. This one is called Douglas fir. And while fir is in the name, it's not technically a fir. You'll notice that the needles are still singly attached, as you can see here. And if I pull one off, you can see that it is a single flat needle. And it has a cone that looks a bit more like a spruce cone. It has papery scales, but it also has these little structures that are coming off. These are called bracts. And these cones will hang down. It makes it a very distinctive tree in the landscape. This tree is native to the western U.S., but you can see it planted in urban parks and in urban yards. Here we have another conifer. And this conifer is interesting in that it's deciduous, meaning all of this green, these little needles, will actually fall off every fall. They'll turn brown and fall off, just like the leaves that we're used to on our other trees. So this entire structure will actually fall off. And you can see that that's what makes up the needles. And the needles are attached there singly, but this whole structure will fall off in the fall. This will also produce a cone. There weren't any on this tree, but they'll produce a cone about this size. And to me, it looks a little bit like a soccer ball, uh, except it's brown. And those cones will appear in the fall. Um, this is bald cypress. Bald cypress is native to the swamps of Florida, and we do see it a bit as an urban tree and seems to do quite well. Here if we look at the bark, which we haven't been focusing on, but bark, if you get, uh, if you understand what it looks like, can actually be very helpful to identify a tree. This is the bark of the bald cypress, and you'll see that it peels a bit in these longer strips. And if you look closely underneath, you can see that sometimes it has a bit of a reddish quality. This bark can look fairly similar to things like juniper or perhaps uh, arborvitae. 